refinery begins fuel exports to West African countries. WAEG derecognizes 13, blacklist 14 schools in Kogi State. Five soldiers killed, many injured, and four missing as terrorists attack Nigeria Army base in Borono. Israeli President Netanyahu offers $5 million reward for each hostage freed in Gaza. And in sports, Real Madrid star Vinicius discovers Cameroonian roots through DNA tests. A very warm welcome to you. This is Malakai TV Global News, reaching you live from the city of Lokoja, the confluent state of Nigeria. I am Gift Daniel. Thanks for joining. The Dangote Petroleum Refinery has begun the export of refined petroleum products to neighboring West African countries, a sign to traders that the mega refinery's operations could soon potentially shake up regional fuel markets. The report said a CLJ in Austin recently loaded more than 300,000 barrels from Dangote and Seoul West. Recall that last month, the chairman of the Ghana National Petroleum Authority, Mustafa Abduhamid, said the country is considering buying petroleum products from the Dangote refinery to help the country cut more expensive exports from Europe, which cost the country about $400 million monthly. The chairman of NPA, Ghana, who spoke at the OTL Africa Downstream Oil Conference in Lagos, said the importing from Nigeria rather than Europe would reduce the prices of other goods and services by removing freight costs. Senator Jimo Ibrahim has expressed support for the proposed $2.2 billion loan under President Bola Tinubu's administration, defending the request during an appearance on Channels TV representing Ondo South Senatorial District. Ibrahim argued that borrowing such an amount for a population of 250 million is not excessive. Describing the $2.2 billion as extremely small and just launch money, Ibrahim emphasized that the loan intended to address a budget deficit is a reasonable step and noted that for a population of 250 million, the amount is not significant and is a good effort by the government. Also stated that Nigeria needs to support the government's initiatives. He further explained that borrowing for development purposes is essential, citing the example of Ajakuta Steel Company Limited. The West African Examination Council, WAEC, has derecognized 13 schools and blacklisted 40 supervisors for various degrees of malpractices in the 2023-2024 examinations in Kogi State. Kogi State Commissioner for Education, Wemi Jones, made this known in Lokoja in a meeting with some principals and supervisors who were indicated by West African Examination Council for exam malpractices. He said that the principals teachers and supervisors to aid and abet examination malpractices who henceforth be prosecuted in accordance with Kogi State Education Law and other matters connected there with 2020. The commissioner said examination malpractices is a criminal offense and will be treated in accordance with the law. He stated that a committee headed by the permanent secretary will be set up to investigate personalities that were indicated by WAEC and whoever that is found wanting will be prosecuted in the law court. Kogi states, he said, has invested so much in education and will no longer tolerate the attitude of bad eggs, drawing back the grains already made in the sector. Also speaking, the Permanent Secretary Ministry of Education, Dr. Jubrin Seyidu Al-Haji, admonished principals and the supervisors to desist from the act, saying their actions are not just robbing the state, but destroying the future of the students. He submitted that whoever that is culpable will be severely sanctioned. Edo State Governor Monday Okwebolo has suspended all market unions and associations with immediate effect. The governor has also ordered the police and other security agencies in the state to arrest the 14 leaders of the various suspended unions and associations without any delay. The decision of the governor was contained in a communication notice issued by the Secretary of the State Government, Umar Musa Ikilo. The governor said the decision was informed by the disturbing activities of market unions in the state. He said reports about that 
The executive of the unions and associations either outrightly prevents farmers from disposing of their wares directly to consumers at the markets or arbitrarily fix prices of staple food at the detriment of the low income earners in the state. On no state governor, Loki Oremison Aeda Tiwa has visited recuperating victims of a recent road accident at the University of Medical Science Teaching Hospital in Ondo. The victims, who are members of the All Progressives Congress, APC, were involved in a car accident on their way from Ilaje local government area to Akure from the mega campaign rally before the election. The chief medical director of the hospital, Dr. Bala Michael Olumide, took the governor round to see the condition of the patients some of whom were already waiting to be discharged from the hospital. Elu Malero Temidere, who spoke on behalf of the victims, briefed the governor on the accident and the treatment so far received, thanking him for the visit and the support given to them. Accompanied by the Commissioner for Health, Dr. Awolowo Banji Ajaka, Governor Aida Tiwa also conducted an unscheduled inspection of some of the facilities at the hospital promising that his administration will improve the state of the hospital. The Boko Haram Islamic State West Africa province ISWAP terrorists have killed five Nigerian soldiers, wounded ten others, and left four missing during an attack on troops in Gubio local government area of Borono State. The Director of Defense Media Operations at Nigeria's Defense Headquarters, Major General Edward Buba, confirmed the incident in a statement. He stated that many of the terrorists were also killed by the troops in the deadly attack, but added that the terrorists also destroyed some equipment during the attack on the troops' location. Equipment destroyed, according to Buba, includes one gun truck, three TCVs, and an excavator. A reinforcement team with air components was dispatched to exploit the general area and the terrorists withdraw roof. Buba said, however, it is pertinent to note that such an attack shall not deter the troops and armed forces of Nigeria from seeing the end of terrorism, insurgency, and other insecurity challenges facing the country. Meanwhile, the Borno state governor has commiserated with the military over the death of soldiers in Kareto. In a statement released by the Borno state commissioner for information and internal security, Yusman Tar, Governor Babangan Zulum said, the attack reminds the state of the callousness of the deadly Boko Haram terrorists. On behalf of the government and the good people of Borono, he conveys his heartfelt condolences to the armed forces and families of the deceased and pray to Allah to rest their souls and grant fortitude to the affected families. Tension has gripped Ohafia local government area in Abia State following a deadly attack by gunmen early this morning, which reportedly resulted in the deaths of several police officers. The incident occurred around 7.30 a.m. in the Ebem Asaga area, although details remain scarce. Local sources indicate that the area has been largely deserted, with residents fleeing in fear of further violence. This attack comes just two days after another tragic incident in Umwaya, where two police officers assigned to Jinja Onwusibe, a member of the House of Representatives, were ambushed while on official duty. The attack, which took place on Sunday evening around 8.30 p.m., left one officer dead from gunshot wounds, while the other officer and the driver managed to escape. We go on a short break. We will be right back. Malachi TV Online is here. For your timely and reliable news that reaches you fast with the breaking news, choose MLC TV. Get human interest stories right here on MLC TV. With entertainment, sports, business, culture, tourism, and fashion news stories all featured on MLC TV. Not forgetting political and current affairs news, state and federal government and people's matters will be discussed regularly on MLC TV. MLC TV, your one-stop online destination for unbiased, accurate news, entrepreneur ideas, and youth matters to the rest of the world. MLC TV, written everywhere, informing everyone.
Welcome back. Now on crime. A recent audit report has revealed significant financial irregularities, totaling over 4.64 billion naira in the Federal Ministry of Works and Housing, sparking concerns over violations of financial and procurement regulations. The findings outlined in the Auditor General for the Federation's annual report cover the period for 2020 to 2021 and highlight substantial weaknesses in internal controls under former minister Babatunde Fashola. The report points to several lapses, including unapproved payments, excess spending beyond budgetary limits, and improper contract awards. The report emphasized the need for the ministry to justify these questionable payments and recover the misallocated funds. It also called for the submission of evidence of compliance with financial regulations to the National Assembly's public account committees with a threat of sanctions for non-compliance. The audit also flagged other irregularities, including the lack of competitive bidding for several contracts, improper documentation and violations of the Public Procurement Act. In response to these findings, the Auditor General has urged immediate reforms to strengthen internal controls and ensure better financial oversight. Furthermore, the Senate has warned that heads of government agencies found guilty of financial misconduct will face sanctions, underscoring the importance of accountability in public sector spending. This report paints a troubling picture of financial mismanagement within the Ministry of Works and Housing, with potential risk of fund diversion and wasted public resources. Next, on our foreign news. After all the sticks Israel has wielded, it has decided to find out if carrots can make a difference. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on Tuesday repeated his vow that Israel would hunt down and punish anyone who hurts a hostage. But he added a new promise. Israel will give a generous reward to anyone who returns a captive, paying $5 million and providing safe passage out of Gaza. I also say to those who want to get out of this maze, whoever brings us a hostage, we will find a safe way for them and their family to get out. We will also give a reward of $5 million for each hostage returned. You choose, the choice is yours, but the result will be the same. We will bring them all back. The reward offer comes as members of Netanyahu's office and facing scrutiny for allegedly leaking classified documents to influence public opinion. Call a popular push for a ceasefire that would win the hostages' release and promote the Prime Minister's negotiating positions. A billboard in Israel with the faces of hostages, about 100 hostages remain in Gaza, about a third of whom are believed by Israeli authorities to be dead. Many Israelis, including the families of hostages, have accused the Prime Minister of failing to prioritize the release of the captives and prolonging the war to hold together this fragile governing coalition which includes members who oppose a ceasefire and have threatened to bring down Netanyahu's government if he agrees to one. Even some leaders of Israel's security apparatus, like Yoav Gallant, the defense minister Netanyahu fired earlier this month, have voiced criticism and frustration at the prime minister's handling of negotiations with Hamas. Netanyahu's comments on Tuesday confirmed Israeli media reports two weeks ago that the government would offer a reward for freed hostages. It was not clear if the price he offered would apply to returning the body of a hostage who had died in captivity. A prominent Ugandan opposition politician was kidnapped during a book lunch in Kenya over the weekend, transferred to Uganda and is being held at a military jail in Kampala. Kizabesigye has run against Ugandan President Yoweri Museveni in four elections and lost each time, although he has rejected the results, alleging fraud and voter intimidation. He has been arrested dozens of times before his wife, Weni Yayima, said she requested the government of Uganda to release Kizi Bezigye, her husband, from where he is being held immediately. A spokesman from the Uganda military could not be immediately reached for a comment. Therefore, Uganda police spokesman Kituma Rusoke said, as police, they don't have him, so they can't make any comments. 
A spokesperson for Kenya's National Police did not immediately respond to a request for comments. Next on Sports Update. star Vinicius Jr. has discovered his ancestry links to the Tika tribe in Cameroon following a DNA test conducted by the Brazilian Football Confederation CBF in collaboration with AfricanAncestry.com. The test results were unveiled on Tuesday, November 19, 2024 during a ceremony at Fontenova where Vinicius was presented with a certificate confirming his heritage. The initiative is part of the CBF's Roots of Gold campaign which celebrates the history and pride of the Afro-Brazilian community, particularly in football. And from our entertainment decks, Songwriter Ed Sheeran made a surprise appearance at a music industry careers event for school children. More than 200 high school pupils from Ipswich attended the event, which showcased careers opportunities at the Bats venue in the towns on Tuesday. It was hosted by Ipswich Education and Music Promoter, Brighton the Corners, which runs an annual multi venue music festival in the town. Audiences were entertained by performances from three of Suffolk's up and coming artists before a surprise appearance by Sheeran. And this is where we wrap it up on today's news. For more information or contributions and advert placements, please call the numbers displayed on your screen. Join us daily to watch our news and other exciting programs that will brighten your day. You can also subscribe to all our social media handles to watch our previous and subsequent programs. We are Malakite TV, reaching everywhere, informing everyone. Please be your brothers and sisters keeper to build a happier and better society together. I am Gift Daniel. Thanks for watching.